this is it. Six days, 52 games, and we are now set for the full bowling PBA Illinois Open Finals here from Parkside Lanes in Aurora. I am Phil Brylow once again joining me in the booth, Chris Barnes. And Chris, it has been a grind all week long, but we have five players who came out on top and now are trying to take down not just this title here for the Illinois Open, but there's some definite implications on USPC Cup points and money as well. Well, certainly a lot at stake, but first things first is these guys, uh, I mean, this is a group of the most talented and the most versatile and maybe the hottest players on tour all at the same time. And so shot makers abound everywhere in this final. And I think we'll see more of the same today, although the challenge is much different when you have to go back and forth. Yeah, we already have two titlers that won earlier this week. Sean Rash won on the Wolf, Anthony Simonson on the Bear. We'll see them in the three, four spots, but the opening match is going to be that man right there, Jason Sterner, taking on Anthony Simonson. Yeah, and Anthony's had a little bit of a struggle uh, once we went to the multiple patterns. He had such a big lead that he was able to hang on, and he bowled good games here and there, but he didn't have as much success as some of the guys say. Like Sterner, who made a pretty big charge to get up into the show, just sneaking by Bill O'Neill in the very last game. Yeah, and there you saw Rash Belmo, our number two seed. He's played all the patterns all kinds of different ways this week. We saw him on the pair the other night in the step layer playing straight. He was wheeling yeah. today. And here's a guy that just had absolute money in match play with E.J. Tackett. Well, he likes this building, that's for sure. And he's been able to use uh, kind of their covert tank, which is kind of their urethanish ball. Uh, he's able to, been able to move in and do that and, and use basically reactive. He has not used urethane on the bear pattern like lots of the players did so they can keep their angles closer on left lane and right lane. Yeah, there are players waiting on the lanes for us to get started. I think it's time to get to Kirk Von Kruger for those player introductions. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2019 Pro Bowling Sunday Summer Swing presented by the Brands of Ebonite International. This is the Pro Bowling BBA Illinois Open. Number five seed has two PBA Tour titles from Rochester, New York, Jason Stunner. And our first featured match will be facing the number four seed, seven PBA Tour titles, including two majors. From Little Elm, Texas, Anthony Simonson. And in that first match, we're going to face our number three seed, 14 career titles with two majors. He was the 2011-2012 PBA Player of the Year. From Montgomery, Illinois, Sean Rash. <laughs> that number five will face our number two seed, 22 career titles, including 11 majors. That's a PBA record. He's a four-time PBA Player of the Year from Australia. Jason Van Monty. Today our number one seed only has to win one match to take home the PBA Illinois Open Championship. He has 13 career titles, including two majors. He was a 2012 PBA Rookie of the Year and the 2016 PBA Player of the Year. From Bluffton, Indiana, E.J. Tassel. And there you see the stepladder is set. Sterner Simonson, your opening match. Winner moves on to take on Sean Rash. Jason Belmonte waiting for the semifinal match. And EJ Tackett, the long wait for Tackett as he's going to try to get some revenge for what happened to him on Thursday night when Simonson in double overtime took down the title from Tackett in the Bear Open. And a little discussion over what player is starting where. It shouldn't be a surprise. Everybody's been thinking that lane 27 is the tougher of the two lanes, and that's the lane that we have the Bear pattern on, Chris, as we are in mixed patterns here in the Stepladder Final. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, 27 has had more challenges all the way through our, our TV shows, generally speaking. Uh, that's Kirk telling us. Uh, Simonson is going to start. Well, I take that back. Actually, the right lane is the one that's given more people trouble on mm. the show mm. itself. But in general, because the wolf pattern has played a little bit easier, especially the guys with urethane, there's not that much risk of throwing it in the gutter. Uh, most players would prefer to finish on that right lane. 
So Simonson was the higher seed coming into this match. He's choosing to start on the bear pattern, and he will finish on the wolf in the 10th frame after Sterner has completed his entire game. I think as this goes on, though, after you get about two or three games in, the, the short pattern transitions a lot, and actually the left lane gets a little bit easier. I wouldn't be surprised if EJ wants to finish on that left lane. And a big break there, taking the nine out on the first shot for Simonson. Simonson, he was our leader coming into match play for the Illinois Open, and he held on to that at the conclusion of rounds one and two of match play, but fell back today into the number four spot. Had some trouble moving from pair to pair here at Park Side Lanes. Yeah, I think the higher end of the building was a little bit trickier. Uh, where I qualified low, I spent most of the time on the high end the first night. I thought pair, you know, the pair to pairs were a little bit more all over the place. Today, I spent much more time on the low end than last night, and uh, I thought the scores were a little higher down there in general. There you see the stats for Jason Sterner and the vicious wrap 10 to start. And according to Brunswick ball rep Eric Cross, Jason's going to throw two different heroes. You see where he averaged 224 on this, which is a combination of 14 games on the, well, 14 games on the bear and then 24 games on the combined pattern. He's going to throw two different heroes, and ironically on the short pattern, he's going to throw a pin up, which typically people would throw a pin down on the on the shorter pattern to control the amount of hook, but he's going to throw a pin down on the left lane where they're a little tighter, and, and uh, but he's doing it to keep his shape and not have to go left as far left to right, get just inside of where the urethane balls going down the lane are. There is no one set of rules for how to play lanes out here in the PBA Tour anymore, except that's not the usual way to play the bear. I tell you, the one common theme from all the reps... There is no one time set of rules for how to play lanes out here in the PBA Tour anymore, except that's not the usual way to play the... ...out the qualifying and the match play rounds. Our see Simonson there, almost two full pins higher per game than Jason Sterner. And that is a lot more shape than we've seen from a lot of players in the past on that wolf pattern. The players go back and forth with the urethane. And uh, last night, I thought there was a ton of urethane. It seemed like it was a little easier. And that is a lot more hooked more in the front and forced guys further left, which then, of course, made it harder for that urethane ball to make the corner down lane. And so you saw a lot less guys throw it today. Went with lower RG symmetrical type uh, reactive balls that were a little slower to to blend that out and able to uh, not see the, the wiggle down lane. And speaking of wiggle. Very fortunate there. <laughs> that seemed to wiggle a bit when I wanted to make the move at the end of that 41. To blend that pattern. out and able to uh, not see the, the wiggle down lane. And speaking of wiggle. Very fortunate there. I kind of see why Simonson wants the right lane in the 10th frame after those first three shots. One real interesting thing was that, uh oh, yeah, eggs is that Belmo, who is one who, who did throw a lot of urethane on the left lane, did not spend Sherry, much time on the left lane, no stretching that out and creating some hold there, which okay. I think makes the middle lane a little bit easier. So Stern, I had to talk to him while he was warming up for the step out. He said he feels like he's free rolling right now. Second life getting into fifth place, and wow. All right, the Tommy Jones key to success. <laughs> We're, uh, he's just got to throw one more, and he should be fine. He'll be home. Should win the match. Unless he does it right now, in which case he probably will be at a huge disadvantage and have no chance to win. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Flash looking to bounce back where he got kind of laughed at himself for it. Yeah, here, a mistake. The hardest part here is to commit and still get it out to around 2-3 and not pull it inside. And you see, on the very fresh, that actually still goes high. Yep. And the urethane ball get it out to around 2-3 we'll and not pull it inside. Down to 34, 35, 37. And then and then, you know, only getting only getting it out to five or six actually, you know, can be okay at the end of the pattern. So Sterner 
No harm, no foul there. Actually takes takes a little lead with a gutter ball. And the six does the job on the ten. Well, the first feather in a cap right here. This is the first really good shot on the right lane. After his last one, <laughs> not so sure where where it might end up. That's a breath of you know a sigh of relief. Simonson's favorite sport when he's not bowling is soccer. And he kicks 10 down there. Quite a bit of shape there. Idle Pearl. Again, that is a low RG symmetrical ball. It is so one of the earlier rolling cores. That cover is a little bit cleaner than the pink idle, which a lot of players did do that this week. It was hard to just use a lot of surface because the front of the, surface, the front of the lane did hook a little bit. And so when you did that, then the ball hit weak. Uh, you know, almost worse than urethane balls did. And so you end up having to use a medium cover and use the core to get it to roll in the mid lane and even it out. Oh, that and was that was a ball change. Ball change, big move to the right, a lot more speed. That was the other angle we saw a lot of players play. It's along the lines of what he did on the bear pattern to, uh, to be at the top of qualifying. Back up at it. But that was a different ball. He was using a symmetrical ball before. That was a halo, much bigger asymmetrical. And that didn't see any bit of it once it got to the right. So that ball is going to be a one-off for him as he's already taken off the rack. Okay. Last time we saw Sterner in the winner's circle was at the striking against breast cancer mixed doubles in 2017 where a last minute pairing with Bridget Poplar put those two in the winner's circle. Double there to go up by 36. Yeah, he was supposed to bowl with uh, with Cassie, and Cassie had a finger injury, couldn't bowl, and last minute, uh, Bridget came up, and uh, they made a little bit of magic together. As uh, they bowled fantastic, were able to knock down. Uh, I believe it was Jason, Jason and Deandra, Jason and Deandra, at the very end. So Sterner looking for. Three in a row and the moral five bagger. Good shot there. Yeah. yeah. The moral five bagger, bagger, yes. Yes. No, that was so that first shot was just a, a nerve shot, yeah. evidently. Sure. A little afraid of getting it to the right. These last two have both projected through the front really well, sliding around twenty eight, going through seventeen to about ten down lane. Well we thought Andrew Anderson had a great fall swing last year. He's got the right lane figured out. Now Anderson went second, fourth, and second. Simonson already with a first and a second here in the fall swing, and he's wasting no time. Whoa. And that yeah, that's part irritation of what's going on, but the other thing, if he can step up and throw a really quick double, it would have also changed the pace of the match a little bit, which at this point, one of the few tools you have available to you in a in a televised stepladder. Yeah, and that's no strikes and four attempts on that left lane for Simonson. And if Sterner here can throw another couple on the board, make it a five bagger by the time he's done, uh, it may not matter what adjustments Simonson makes on lane 27 in the ninth. He's got it matched up really well there on the right lane, and he doesn't even have to throw it right at the gutter, which is which is great news because then if it gets to that point, it doesn't become an either or where a small miss to the right becomes a gutter ball. He has some room to the right there. He can still go, extending his lead to 56 on a 230 pace. Max score for Simonson, just 204. Yeah, you just heard the shot there of Sean Rash on the practice pair. Rash awaiting the winner of this match. There's a ball there somewhere, and he gets lucky to take the six down. It's a good thing we put that ball in the witness protection program before it got to the head pin. Yeah. So nobody had to see what happened, and Simonson knows this one's pretty much done. He's just gonna, he's gonna take his turn here and get out of the way, but he is uh, all but mathematically eliminated now. And Simonson, he's going to lose out on his shot at the top prize.
for the USBC Cup points, $20,000. He would have needed to win this event to lock it up. And he's got Sean Rash already in front of him in the standings and the points. I missed the pitting there, but what's happened, he's, he's won on the one pattern. He lost in the final on the other pattern. But in a very short format, you know, basically three shots, he had he had one ball go high, one ball go light. It completely changed his game plan. And he lost the lane for, for four frames. The difference in a full game and four frames, all right, well he might he might have seventy eight or seventy five in the in the fifth, and yeah. then he makes a change and finds a three bagger late for two oh. Yeah. Well here it just means it means you shoot one seventy and you're out. Yeah, and especially, you know, that shot in the eighth by Sterner getting away with a terrible shot and yeah. taking the six out. Now, the key for Sterner here, it's really easy after all the adrenaline goes up to just go, ooh, and relax. And then, but the adrenaline will come back up when he starts the next match. He's got to throw this shot like it matters. He's not going to get any more practice balls at any point. So there's one chance to throw extra shots. Good rhythm there. Sterner moving on against Rash. Simonson's going to take home a check for $5,000 for the fifth place finish. And we'll have to see where he ends up once the last ball is thrown and how much USBC Cup money Simonson's going to be taking as well. There's a lot of scenarios out there. But the big scenario done as no chance for the 20000 on top for Anthony Simonson. The good news for Sterner is he still has room to get into the top eight for the USBC Cup. He's well on the outside looking in. He and Belmonte are actually tied in points, but it would take either Sterner or Belmonte winning this event to get into the top eight. That would knock Kyle Troop to the outside looking in for the invites to Austin for the full bowling ATX invite and the China Tiger Cup. Speaking on behalf of the other seven guys that are already qualified, they probably like to not see Jason make it, but uh, he is. Well, Jason's His history of winning is yeah. <laughs> pretty strong. So, and they all fall when it doesn't yeah. matter. All strikes on that right lane, and still shoots 184, and that's uh, you know a perfect synopsis of what we saw throughout the week. And a nice bit there. You saw Anthony Simonson run over and shake the hands of proprietor Kirk Frieders here at Parkside Lanes. And we're going to have Sterner and Rash coming up next. Great game there by Sterner. Couple lucky breaks. you got to get breaks during one game matches like that. But the bad breaks on the on the left lane for Simonson were really the difference in that match. Yeah, I, I really actually think Jason's, you know, he, he had threw the bad one in the first frame. After that, they were pretty good. The shot that did go high, they got the lucky strike on. I think it was almost as much a fact that the match was over and uh, a little bit of a letdown on adrenaline. He threw great ones again in the 10th. He's going to hit the pocket a lot. Seems like he has control of the pocket on both lanes. Sean has got a, his hands full coming up next. Yeah, I mean, Sterner coming back. Gutter ball in the third frame, or in the second frame, pardon me. Uh, came back with that quality strike spare and then just started stringing strikes after that and once again cruises to a 248 Sterner what do you do now if you're Jason Sterner I mean you've got the right lane down what do you do with the left lane well, the, the good news for him is Jason is a, is a hard practicer and he's inside of his circle of things that he really likes to do he's not having to over manipulate he's not having to over trick anything he can roll it, he can stay more up the back of it, which allows his lines, you know, he's not having to really get steep with it or really over rotate it to try and make the ball come around the corner. Uh, this is his wheelhouse. So also, this is also Sean's wheelhouse. <laughs> and uh, 
again, like we see lots of times when guys come on, those first couple shots for Sean will tell a lot of the story. You know, 230 is a really good game on this, especially as the lanes transition a little bit. But Sean will have to come out and figure out that left lane, which seems to be pretty tricky. Yeah, we haven't seen the last of Anthony Simonson yet. Let's give you another look at the upcoming Simonson Leave It Behind. What you, what you think? So it almost it like taking a walk down memory lane, you know, not only with the movie itself, but processing, you know, everything through my head as I'm telling the story. So it's one of those things I don't really go around, you know, you know, Pete Panner trying to get everybody to feel sorry for me. It's just kind of one of those things I put my head down and, and keep moving. Uh, but, you know, the support, everybody coming out and watching it, and, you know, the words that they had to say were really special to me, honestly. I must admit, over the last, you know, six months, nine months, there is a more mature Anthony on, on the PBA Tour, and like I said, he's going to be one of the best ever. You know, me and Jason are actually, we're not super close, but we've definitely uh, had some, some brother-type brother, brother type moments. But, you know, for him to publicly come out and say what he said in the video, I think is definitely, uh, you know, it almost turns a light bulb on. Like, yes, the attitude's slowly getting better, but, uh, you know, if we can kind of get that completely pushed out of the way, it, it's going to be really hard to beat me, I believe. And you don't have to be on Flow Bowling right at noon on September 4th to watch Simonson leave it behind as it will be in the archives at flowbowling.com for you to catch at your earliest convenience. There you see the score of our opening match, Jason Sterner, 248, Anthony Simonson, 191. I can't take credit for the tag. I can give it to T.J. Arnold. Flash versus Rash coming up here <laughs> in match number two. And Rash getting the last of his practice shots in. There is PBA Hall of Famer Carmen Salvino with his lovely wife, Jenny. 61 years of marriage for that lovely couple. God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> I always make sure yeah. whenever Carmen walks in the door, the first person I always say hi to is Mrs. Salvino. Kind of eats Carmen up that little bit. <laughs> so Carmen participated early in the flow bowling summer swing. He bowled in the Wolf event, finished ahead of 10 other players in the field, but unfortunately... Carmen had to withdraw after that, but good to see Carmen and Mrs. Salvino back here watching this championship round for the Flow Bowling PBA Illinois Open. I think he actually would have had more success on the bear than he did on the uh, on the wolf. Obviously, ball speed sets a premium on that shorter pattern, and and if that's that's one of the the tools that's not as available to him now as he was before. He's he's in trouble shape for. Uh, for 83 years old. And the, but, best, uh, the, the, the best handshake grip still, I think, on tour. <laughs> he, if you're not ready for it, you're, you might think your knuckles might crack a bit because he uh, grasps on and holds on. You got a good Carmen story while waiting for the end of the practice? Good one you've put in 30 seconds? What? You got a good Carmen, at least one good Carmen story? One good Carmen story? There's yeah. a lot of good Carmen stories. I mean, he's the original showman uh, of the PBA. Uh, you know, the... I don't know if he's the Italian he stallion, the but he was he <laughs> was he was one of the true starts a match on the left lane, which is the long pattern. Keep in mind they're bowling on dual patterns today. Long oil on the left lane, short oil on the right. Bear and wolf. As soon as we get our scoreboard ready, we'll be ready to start our competition. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a nice round of applause to kick off match two? I want to change the voice on the GPS on my cell phone to KVK. <laughs> That'd be so soothing with, please make a left turn. Good luck, boys. It's very authoritative at the same time. You yep. feel very positive that this is the right, right <laughs> turn to make. <laughs> so interesting here, Sean, having Sterner start the match on the left lane. I would have thought with the problem Sterner was having, Sean would have started the match off himself. No problem for Flash. Honestly, I don't. I don't think it had a ton to do with. Uh, I thought Jason had pretty good reaction on both lanes. I do think that jo Sean generally likes to finish first, and so that probably played into it. As long as he didn't have a 
significantly different reaction on either of the two lanes. Sean, uh, more than our first two players, will be playing the two lanes with much more similar trajectories. And that 14th title for Sean came on Tuesday night here in the that Wolf Open. Was in. Sean also using a, a uh, hero on the right lane, the same ball that Jason Sterner is using. Uh, I believe I've been told by Eric he's going to use a conspiracy hybrid on the left lane. So the balls that Sean used Tuesday night to win the Wolf title aren't even close to coming out of his bag right now on that right <laughs> lane. No, I think the players, because of the strategies and the generally accepted strategy that is that the closer you can play your angles, speeds, and rotation to both lanes, the better off you are. And so a lot of players went to using urethane on the left lane to allow their angles to stay closer and then something on the right lane, whether it's reactive or urethane, to play similar. Um, and it appears that's what these players did as well. Well, certainly Sean, in this case. And the four Instead of go. using urethane, he's using his hand to basically make the ball end over end and tumble forward. So, Crossing. so they're letting the ball take away some of what they need to physically adjust, and that makes the simplifies the game for them. Well, the, yeah, if, if possible, they want to use balls that allow them to play both lanes similarly so they can repeat basically the same shot. I did not find that to be very easy for me to do myself, and so... I, I used a variety of balls in the right lane from urethane and really playing straight to uh, some earlier rolling, uh, you know, anywhere from flux to, to ordinances to kind of low RG symmetrical balls like what Anthony used to, to go around them a little bit on the right lane and the left lane. Uh, I, I was much slower and played a line a little bit left of where Sterner did, probably close to what EJ is going to do. It's a little in too. Now, Sterner's good pattern this week early on was the Wolf Open pattern. Finished in seventh in the Wolf Open, slid back in the bear, 47th, but he still had enough of a pinfall to get into the Illinois Open match play rounds. And the advantage of having all that field trying to play the lanes closer to what they did on the Wolf is a big advantage to a player like Jason, who is able to keep his angles now a little straighter and do the things that he does best. Yeah. There's sideboards for a reason. Yeah. That spare has been no bargain all week. As hard as it is on the wolf, it's even harder on the bear. So a pretty consistent strategy to not even try and hook it on the short pattern. It's hard to get it, keep it right long enough to get to the right side of the three bin. And then on the bear, once you get it to the right side of the three bin, then it doesn't hook at all. This is Sterner's best finish of 2019. First step ladder final of the year. His best finish earlier was sixth at the PBA Hall of Fame Classic back in January. I guess if you can carry shots like that, it's going to be your day. Because, wow. Breaks have a way of evening themselves out one way or the other. And so. Three on the deck. As yeah. long as they're horizontal, it's a strike. You know, honestly, throughout the round robin, a lot of those shots would actually stay there. And you wanted to do that more than you wanted to go hard left to right. But. So far, none of the players using urethane on the left lane at all, so very, very little carry down. Yep, that pin never had a chance rolling around to get to 10. No. Take an extra look, and the ball motion just turn and very, roll. Very, very end over end, trying to trap it off the gutter, and that time he got it to roll out just a little bit too quick. When I say trap it, there's a little bit more friction on one two than there is it. At say three, four, five uh, down the lane. So he's trying to get it to where he can get it to one, two, and it doesn't overhook off of it and go high. And at the same time, using the end that it picks up and gets that down lane oil the urethane's created. So Sean Rash came into this event after the first eight USBC Cup point events in the lead, but the only way he locks it up for sure is taking down this title in the Illinois Open. Best shot of the game for Sean. Keeps him within two pins, although Sterner will have a chance to extend out the 12. Great shot here, post this one up. A little further right than last time. Last time was 11 to maybe eight. That time was way closer to nine to about six or seven. 
Jared, pretty good run over the last 10 days. Not only the seventh place in the Wolf Open, but the seventh place finish at the PBABowlerStore.com Classic in Coldwater. They finished up last Friday. Gotta go. Nope. And it got up and went, but the wrong way. Well, once again, he's on a single strike, so no harm, no foul. As long as he makes the spare, it's uh, the same as just a ringing 10. Yeah, well, going for a different PB record. Most gutter balls in the step ladder final where you take out the championship. He hasn't even got to the same number in the same <laughs> game. So, or, uh, my friend Mr. Jones still... Uh, He rolled a stranglehold on the title match gutter ball for the victory. <laughs> Stat once again following up his gutter ball with another spare. You see it gets out 2 1 and just. And watching his feet off. at the foul line, much more stable on that spare shot than he was on the strike ball. The strike ball had the little, had the heel pop up a bit. Yeah, you get a little bit forward, basically, and that's once you get in front of it, that's when you miss it at the bottom. It doesn't pick up as soon. That picked up nicely. Boy, that, and that's his best shot of the, of the, the match, for sure, and maybe even the day. This one here is as good as it gets. Perfect balance through, and that ball just mows, splits the 8-9. Picture perfect strike. Still up by two, but Sean has a chance to take a lead change. Last time, a little bit too much up the back of it. Now, does he move closer to it, or does he move left and get around it just a little bit? And the noise in the crowd. I'm not even sure it's noise of the crowd. The thing is, he has to do something a little bit different, mm -hmm. and there's probably just still a touch of indecision there. Okay. I don't know that for him. I know that for me. <laughs> that. That comes into play. A little small distractions come into play there when you're not 100% com committed to what you're about to do. And more around it. And a lot better finish through the pocket. So I added just a little bit more axis rotation. Thumb from 12 and said, moved over around 11 or so, added up maybe five degrees of axis rotation. Then you see that ball continue through the pins versus rolling out and basically finished on the right side of the nine pin last time. Sean Rash was 14th on the bear open after his win Tuesday night on the Wolf. Good shot. It looked like he moved left and tried to do the same thing with his hand on the left lane, too, again, so he could repeat the same shots. Sometimes that doesn't work very well on two different length patterns, and it very nearly did not right there. It certainly did not make more shape down lane for him than I think he was hoping for. Yeah, that was a stare down and the hope all the way. Yeah, execution-wise, that's exactly what he wanted, but the, the actual ball motion-wise, very fortunate. Up by 22 now. Or, I'm sorry, 18 now. Starting a chance to cut it back to 8. And in the Whoa. Whoa. Called it too soon. It's just about tied up, Mr. Jones, right there. Can we get an official USB-C measurement on that lane width? Well, if the other two hadn't gone in, it's definitely not a high yeah. gutter. But <laughs> to your point earlier, that time, balance-wise, much better. Basically the exact same shot, but because his leverage is better, his head was in front of his knee. So his hand hadn't rolled over the top. He didn't miss it just slightly. That one does actually pick up and make it back. Huge difference for him. It puts him in position to take the lead again. And for a lot of people new to the sport of bowling, your upper body has as much to do with how that ball goes down the lane as just your hand and shoulder does. Left. That's good news for him right there. Very simply, your shoulders, left and right, you know, are accuracy as far as left and right. Your upper body tilt as far as forward and back are determine the length of your ball from the front to back of the lane. Although generally, inversely, the for, further forward you are, mm -hmm. the longer your ball ends up going because the less leverage you have at release. 
get the lead back. There we go. We talked about it. it's so hard to come on the lane and get those first three shots. Jason didn't take advantage of the fact that Sean was a little bit uncomfortable early. Gave him a few free swings at it. Now he's in rhythm. It's going to be tough to beat from here on. Rash never lower than fifth during the 24 games of match play. And he ended up in fifth at the end of the round last night, but came back through match play today, ended up in the number three position, average of 223.6 for the week on a 15 and nine match play record. Exceptionally tough to do in front of your hometown and with all the other things that he's taken on to help help out in the organizing of this event. Oh. How do you adjust in a ring 10? It just doesn't almost make <laughs> sense. The last shot goes by it, got too deep in the lane, and he crumbles the bucket. This one is absolutely flush all the way. It's been a little bit tough. There's been there's been a lot of ringing 10s on that left lane. And because of the angles and lack thereof, it's tough to really change your mode of attack when you're playing that one 12 to 8 shot. Okay. He can move a, a little bit back right and go back up the back of it again, but that means he has to do something different on that lane than he does on the other lane. Yeah, pretty interesting. One of Sterner's better finishes this year on the winter tour was when we had in Lubbock, we had the Wolf and the Scorpion, 32 and 42, and Sterner finished in 20th there. Whoa! <laughs> The six pin tried to stop the head pin from getting to the well, this ten. This is why you spend so much time practicing. It's not so that your great shots are great. You want to make them more often, but this one's a little bit in, but his balance is good enough that it still stretches. It got actually a little bit behind the head pin, and fortunate to send that head pin flying back across. <coughs> Jason, along with Sean, because they're more end over end, more control type, you know, control the pocket type players, don't get a ton of those bird dogs like you see from from Jason, from EJ, from some of the other players. Up by three, chance to go to 13. Oof. Absolutely pure by flash. And Sterner, Sterner in the jersey of his favorite soccer team, Atlanta Football Club, same colors. Sean, still an opportunity to max score out at 247. Sterner on 240 pace. Uh, Something hit the head pin and moved it forward on path back to the 10. Just, Get an extra look at the pinfall. Just slightly more up the back of it this time than the last time. Again, we're talking about two or three degrees. We're not talking about some complete miss or anything like that. His balance is good. I mean, that's a rotation of the clock of about 20 minutes. <laughs> it's just, it's just not very much at all. Well, Rash, the now winner in big trouble. Yeah, Rash, the winner in the Wolf, the 14th on the Bear, and it's starting to almost look like it's going to be a fourth place finish here on the Illinois Open. Still a little hope here. He throws all three in the tenth. She's 236. He'll first Sterner to fill 17 in the 10th frame. Ooh. Boy, the ring 10s on that lane are gonna end up being his undoing. So, we're not completely done yet. We've seen a paid or two before, so it's not to well, that's the thing. So keep it, if Sterner keeps it, tries to keep it away from the ditch, that could be even it bigger some, problem. It brings some other things into play for sure. It's the one thing about finishing on the right lane is that there's not an easy bailout. On the left lane, you make a pretty good shot, and it's fine. But the penalty of zero can be such a psychological factor that can cause a different error if you let it if you let it happen. Not much difference between those last three shots on that left lane. Ring ten, ring ten, and of course on the fill ball, the Murphy's law shot of all time. The 
he could have thrown that one backwards between his legs and <laughs> probably struck on that one. So 225. Basically, Sterner, if he gets nine on this shot, will have enough to shut him out. Good shot. Yep. Sterner moves on, rash and forth. Belmo coming on for the semifinal match against Sterner. Heard a little squeak in the middle there. I thought he might even, he might have caught himself. That's not a normal sound. Right as his right foot went forward, it, it chirped just slightly on the approach. Got it up in the air. Let's see if the up in the air part was on purpose or. It was a chirp again. Yeah, so maybe he does it all the time. That's the first time I heard it that loud. So he is, he is locking it just slightly. And, uh, you know, against all odds, I, I didn't foresee him falling to 240 with another giant score of 260. Flash. Ah. <laughs> no Ming the Merciless facing Sterner yet. Yeah. <laughs> Could Jason Belmonte fill that role in the semifinal match? We'll find out next. So, match number two in the books, Jason Sterner, huge score to take out Sean Rash. He moves on to take on Jason Belmonte. And it's just been weird for Sterner. First game, left lane was the issue. Second game, couple of errant shots in the right lane. Still finished out strong. What does Sterner need to do to get it all together here? Because you know he's in a, for a big match coming up against Jason Belmonte. I don't know about get it all together. He shot 508 for the two games. <laughs> and it seems like he's doing just fine. The one thing I do expect to happen though is Jason's going to throw, going to throw urethane. I believe on both lanes unless he changes strategy, and that will create because of his rev rate will create a little more friction in the front. That might not affect Jason too much because he's going to be a little left of him anyway. But on the right lane, or on the left lane for sure. It'll start creating a little bit of carry down. And uh, uh, he'll also have some carry down on that right lane. Easy for the ball to get behind, start leaving a couple of flat tens. And all it takes is a couple, and we know what happens when Jason gets opportunities. Yeah, and there's some unique scenarios going on right now, moving on to that USBC Cup competition. Right now, Kyle Troop is sweating it out because the two men that can knock him out of the top eight are bowling this match with well, Belmo and Sterner. Rash is going to be sweating it out because if EJ Tackett wins the tournament, EJ Tackett also takes the USBC Cup first place against Rash. So yeah. there's a lot of scenarios going on here at Parkside Lanes in Aurora. Well, good news, bad news for Kyle is both those guys can't make the final. So he will at least have a 50-50 chance. Uh, the bad news for both of those guys, though, is someone <laughs> is going to end up dropping either a spot or being eliminated. And, uh, yep. uh, you know, whoever wins this match is obviously great players. A lot of, either Jason with a ton of momentum. Sterner going in the final game, or the best bowler in the world is going to have his chance to take down another title. Yeah, and EJ Tackett, I mean, he's been waiting in the wings for a while now. He had such a spectacular 24-game match play block. What is EJ doing right now? Because he's getting some practice shots in here on the championship pair. Yeah. Is he just getting a feel, or what exactly is he doing right now? Yeah, I mean, he's going to make sure that his same look that he's had. Uh, EJ is not a, a big-time tinker looking for the perfect bar reaction guy. He's just going to see how much the lane hooks now compared to when he was on practice earlier and how big a move he's had to make. And so it'll be just kind of some lineup shots. And so he, when he comes back, he'll be pretty well dialed in uh, real close to it when he comes back for his final eight shots. So we've got some practice remaining for these players before we get into our semifinal match. Jason Sterner versus Jason Belmonte. We'll be back with that next year. Flow Bowling, PBA Illinois Open rolls on here on Flow Bowling. And there's your step ladder to this point. Sterner, 5.07 for the first two. And a big fight on his hands. It was down that first ball to 10th frame for Sterner. Still needed to perform. And he was clutch with the strike. Now we're going to have Sterner and Belmonte coming through. Belmo finishing yeah. off his practice. And really a little unlucky for Sean. Uh, uh, the flat tens on the right lane aren't really so much unlucky as, as far as he just he trapped it a little bit too much and the ball got there a little bit too flat rolled out just in front of where he wanted it to maybe maybe 12 inches uh, too quickly and but the left lane he pulled a great game on that left lane after the first frame and really didn't get anything to show for it and two strikes there I mean that's a you know that's a 30 pin swing it would have been an entirely different tenth frame and 
I think that was Bemmel's last practice shot that went into the ditch on the right lane. So yeah. that's not a way you want Very to confidence inspiring. <laughs> um, a lot of times I like to do that where, at least for myself, 90 to 95% of my misses will be to the left. And so my very last shot will be the furthest right I can throw it and just to confirm that, hey, I can get it to that spot and still get it off of it. The problem is when it goes in the gutter, <laughs> it doesn't. It, it takes, it, you know, eliminates, it eliminates a board or two away from what he could do. So the lane selection's been made, and it looks like it's going to be Jason Sterner starting things off on the bear pattern on the left lane. All right, looks like we're ready to go, fans. How about a big round of applause? I anticipate Sterner. Sterner to see a lot more transition in this game. And this is where things started to get a little dice here. He got into game three and game four uh, with a bunch of urethane going down the lane. A little more hook in the front and get way tighter down lane. Now the flip side of it is we saw no urethane in match one or two. Is it tough for a PBA player to change their eyes to adjust to that urethane carry down in the middle of a step ladder? At this point in the match, it's not you don't really break it down any more than just moving ones and okay, and, you know, uh, some players will throw it slower. To, for it to roll through that oil down lane, and some players will just move their feet right and get up against it and use it as hold. Jason has the ability to do both because he doesn't use a ton of access. I mean, Jason Sterner <laughs> can do either one. Most players out here will just throw a little slower and let it roll through. There's the man, number one in the flow of bowling PBA power rankings. And that's an interesting start. That is also not urethane, <laughs> which is good news. Well, his last ball was urethane yep. in practice that went in the gutter. And so, uh, <laughs> and as we see, we didn't re-rack it after the, after the gutter ball. So uh, he, just, he just went to do over here, I yeah. believe. Yeah. So. Is that in the PBA rules yet? If you're number one in the flow power rankings, you get a mulligan during a step ladder? Yeah, I don't uh, think the players would go for that. Yeah, I'm not sure we've seen one of those since uh, Bob Learn. Yeah. So that's 20 years now, isn't it, with Bob? Yeah, that's uh, you, we're, 99. Yeah, we're, yeah. No, before that. Was it before that? Okay. Yeah. 96, Six. I believe. Flagship open. Yeah. yeah. So Belmo's going to. Turn you want to go on tour. <laughs> you see Belmo there, 226.19 average over his 52 games, and the 17 and 7 match play record. Average basically the same thing that Anthony averaged, but he won. He had another 105 bonus points. Which is He's been doing that all week long. We've had him in the Bear Open, Cashers round. He made a 2 10 one game, 4 9 the next game, couple of washouts, and he makes it like he's leaving single pins. You want to know how to become the best in the world? Throw the best mm -hmm. strike ball, and then it, work on your weaknesses and become one of the best spare and split makers on tour yep. at the same time. It's a hallmark that Mark Roth made his thing. Uh, one of the most accurate and best spare shooters to go along with the most powerful strike ball, and it's reinventing himself right here in front of us. And both those players, Roth and Belmonte, I believe way underrated by the general public on that spare game. And there's the urethane ball on the left lane. Ironically enough, urethane on the left. Reactive on the right. We'll see if that changes next time around after that 4-9. But that's where his last practice ball with the urethane ball going in the gutter spooked him away from doing what he had been doing, or I think what his original game plan was going to be. Second frame for Sterner working on a strike. Find out if that urethane affected his ball at all. Yes. Ooh. You see it. It started to gain traction at the 30, 30 foot mark, started to get up the hill, and then it looked like it just lost contact with the lane right there. Yeah. And instead of mowing through the, the eight nine, it flex across almost seven tens. No problem on the cover. So one of the advantages you have by being a higher seed is you get some practice balls, and it's probably the only disadvantage of being a lower seed. Because generally speaking, you're comfortable with the lane, you know what's going on. But these first couple of frames, you might have to 
you might have to change what you're doing just slightly, depending on how much the player with practice changed the lane. All tied up through two. Both players with strikes on the left lane. And another head pin in front of the 10. Can you make a move off that? Oh, the first one was pretty much perfect, so. But I do expect that he will have to probably throw it a little bit slower on that left lane. That's all the carry down from the urethane ball. Just changing how much traction his ball has down lane slightly. It's not a ton. Well, you can see him in the back in the shape. He's, what he's doing right there is confirming in his head what he wants to do next time over there. See him on his phone. He's going to put in where he's going to. He does some notes similar I do. He's going to put in where he's standing, where he's looking, confirm that in, type it in, and now, now it's locked in for his next shot. Looking for the double. Too much ball? Wow. I mean, 4-9 wow. and 9 back to back. 4-9 well, is just, I mean, that's not actually a pocket shot. And that's okay. something with his angle. Occasionally, you leave the 9 there. It's high, but but to where he's kind of trapping it, almost rolling it out, that's, that I would say is more of a bad break. Okay. If it's his normal thing where he's creating 6 degrees of entry angle, it's going to happen a lot from there. But that actually stopped and still 9-pinned. So a little unfortunate after a move off of 4 9 where he probably moved probably as much as two. I wouldn't have expected it to get back that close to running by the nine pin again. So with that though, because he struck on the left lane last time, still has a one pin lead, both pin players on spares. And Jason choosing to finish on this left lane. Belmonte that is. Belmo got that 11th major to break the record he had with Pete Weber and Earl Anthony at the World Championship. Took down Jacob Buttroff in the championship match in Detroit. With shots like that. Pretty amazing how much room he can create in the front 25 feet of the lane. It's not always about down lane. Last shot was right earlier. Rolled off of it, no problem. That one was in and a little bit longer. Got back, basically fed to the same spot at 35 feet, and from there just arced off of it. Playing very little shape down past the 30 foot mark. Stay within one. Does so successfully. And he opted just to catch it more right there. You saw at the bottom, he just grabbed onto it a little bit, made it pick up. You can see and talk about, I got to get it to pick up and roll through that spot now. I can't just shove it down there anymore. Well, it's got to be a tough spot for Sterner, two and a half games in here, to even have to try to think about a ball change if something goes wrong. No, it's not really a ball change. But it's the same thing no. that happens every time you bowl in a squad. Okay. And so just because you're not changing pairs doesn't mean the pair's not changing. Get that t-shirt at chrisbarnes.com after the round's done. And there's a mixer for Sterner. And the voice of Kirk von Kruger telling us Sterner now in the lead. Try to do the same thing and just catch it a little bit more. It did not make it pick up as much as he thought. So still another small move for him. My guess on that lane, that would be the speed change where he'd get a little softer there and keep his angles open though. Is that ball change? Huh. No, it's not a ball change. Nope. Yeah. Definitely better result, but not a ball change. Yeah. yeah. I can't tell if that's a high road or not. I think it's a high road. Asku said uh, when we had him in the booth during match play that he almost made a lot of money with that ball over the last couple of years out here on tour. Some form of the high road. And then back to the pitch black. Yeah, he had an older Nano that has a bunch and bunch of games on it, so it tames out. It's not nearly so aggressive down lane for him, which is another way that he can do it is basically wait till they're 
saturated with oil so they're not so responsive. Oh. And the head pin does nothing. Now with the angles being that flat, that's you know, normally a, a little flat ten wouldn't be that big of a surprise, but with the rev rates that he creates as well as, you know, Simonson and Troop and, and EJ, they don't leave very many of them. No, the bottom of that six pin was almost perpendicular to this kickback and just went straight down to the flat gutter. Mm. We saw him miss a 10 pin during the bear the other night. He did. He did. The players have had some trouble on that left lane, and occasionally, I, you know, I think the three pin gets a little bit up, you know, gets a little bit deep on the players. And so, it, you know, relative left to right, it's, they're almost dead on spot, but sometimes I think it gets slightly deep and it makes it pretty easy for guys to leave uh, flat 10. It's not a big deal. There's two re racks left, you know, per game. You just gotta, you gotta catch it and make the re rack. Attack another 10 on to the advantage. Ooh. And how about that? I think it used the paint on the bottom ring on the neck to hold on all the way across the pin deck. This is one of the most unusual bird dogs you'll ever see. I'm not sure if that was a four pin or the seven pin where yeah. basically the butt of the pin stayed on the lane, the head stayed off, and so it rolled directly across without either falling off or rolling around in either direction. Almost never happens. It just huge break. Brings the lead to yeah. 10, chance to move that lead to 20 now. And now you just mentioned that re-rack. I, I can't really tell from where we're at in the booth whether that three pin was actually off or if he's just bringing the emotion level back down. I, I think he needed a moment to collect himself here. It's a big shot and, and an opportunity. He may not get another one. Seventh frame, another strike for Sterner. Watch pace-wise. I don't think we had the mile per hour up there, but that's uh, from the shot before that one. That was a little softer with his speed. Didn't miss any part of that one, and that one got picked up. He was talking about earlier, moving his hands back towards into him. Got the ball to pick up in front of that oil down lane instead of trying to make it hook down there. Uh-oh. No, it's oh, fine. Wow. Uh, no problem. And I did get confirmation wow. that's a high road nano, and that's okay. that one I saw him throw it during... Uh, during the, the round robin as well, when he moved in, it's just got a ton of games on it, so it's it's still an atomic bomb in his hand, but uh, it's got so much oil in it now that it actually is a little tamer than most of the reactives are for him. If the pores are full on a reactive resin bowling ball, it's it can't absorb more oil off the lane, can it? Well, it's still reactive, but yeah. it's going to be less so for sure. I mean. It's all a chemical reaction, and that's why you see so many players wiping the oil off the ball. Not only does it make the surface fresh for each shot, but it also stops as much of that, that oil absorption and that chemical change from happening as possible. So Sterner's still up by 20. Belmo can take it down to 10. As he steps up in the eighth frame. We'd read Belmo's list of achievements, but we only have the remainder of this and the final match to dedicate to the Illinois Open. Got to go. A little too wide in the front. It tried, but uh, yeah, that's <laughs> a rare error on his part where he just it got away from him a little bit going left yeah. to right. And as you see, if we scan the crowd just a touch there, a few uh, yeah. the new Fad taking over not only America but pretty much the world. You leave a five pin, and if you were happen to miss it, that uh, you would owe everyone with a hand up a beverage. Don't see the best in the world missing the five pin. Well, there are some things on that short pattern where you can. There's a little small miss in, especially in game one. But yeah, him missing that one there is probably akin to Walter Ray missing one as well. It's. I guess in theory it could happen. It's just not going to. Yeah. That would be the unicorn of the PBA Tour. No well, doubt. here's the situation. Now Sterner's on 229 pace. Belmonte's max score is 229. Oh. 
<laughs> Boy, that's his best yeah. shot of the whole game on the right lane. Take Once again, seeing him post a shot up and then watch which direction he moves. He's not hoping this ball hooks. This is all about carry. You start moving to the left, you know it's good. And there you see Flash once again back at the approach. Bring it down. Giving himself that second to rest. Up 30 now on 230 pace. Spare, spare is enough to win. Nice frame on the bear lane. And the head pin doesn't do the job on the seven. Yeah, a little bit wide. I think he, he was he was pleased that that got back to the pocket even. A little bit firm. And yeah, watch that head pin just go to the sideboard and fight the four pin for what gets yeah. to go to the seven. It was online, actually. It was probably with you know, not more than a, under a board away from his perfect target line. And so, but... Slightly firm, and with the oil that is getting added in down lane with each ball that Jason throws, uh, you know, that's not the miss he can make. You know, firm. So, happy with nine, still in a position where a mark will shut out Jason, provided that Jason now, that his only hope is to strike out, put just a touch of pressure on him. Yeah, mandatory strike mode for Belmo here in the semifinal match. EJ Tackett waiting in the wings. See who takes home this championship of the PBA Flow Bowling Illinois Open and uh, bounced. Wow, was that farther right than last time on that? Just, lane? just it got there a little quicker. Okay, but it wasn't ever in danger of going in the gutter. No. That's actually a little bit of a surprise. I don't think he's, well, I don't think he was worried about it overhooking. It. You know, he's made a probably a two or three board move since the very beginning of the game. I don't think he saw that coming at all. Executionally, I think that's pretty close to what he wanted to do. If he, if he had to go back again, he'd, he'd end up having to move a couple more boards left again. Well, Belmo is 14th on the Wolf, 4th on the Bear, and it's starting to stare in the face that it's going to be a third place finish here for Belmonte. Well, for those players pulling the ATX, the number one player in the world has been eliminated. But he's going to provided Flash can keep one on the lane here. Right. <laughs> Interesting sign in the crowd. They turn around the Sean Rash, large, uh, big head, and they change it to Jason Sterner's face, just in writing on the back of the Sean Rash. Doing the math. Mm -hmm. At least that's the theory. Um, amongst other things. Yeah. Balancing his checkbook. Because yeah. he's gonna he's gonna let him sit there for a little while. Yeah. Third place, seven thousand dollars for this event. Now, now even that doesn't really matter. So, two oh eight. Jason needs. Sterner needs one pin. In yep. either of the two shots now. Yeah. Uh, I do like his chances. Now, you mentioned the importance of Belmont not being at the ATX invite. Another thing, along with the $25,000 on top of the ATX invite, that's the last event that counts on the PBA Tour money list for 2019 for the PBA Clash in November on Fox. So that might leave another spot open for somebody else to get enough money at the ATX invite, let's say like a possibly Jason Sterner or possibly A.J. Johnson, and make their way into the Clash as well. Really threatening the gutter on that one. <laughs> so that's the big question now. Could Sterner finish climbing the ladder? Or is EJ Tackett going to kick him down a couple of rungs? We'll find out when that championship match starts here shortly. Full bowling, PBA Illinois Open championship match coming up next. Jason Sterner, another victory on the stepladder. 
Climbing his way up. Big man on campus ready to knock him back down, though, with EJ Tack in the championship match. Uh, EJ Tackett, what's the uh, strategy now coming on for EJ after having Belmo kind of change things around? Because Belmo used some urethane on that right lane during his practice. Does that change EJ's strategy? I, I don't think it changes it a lot. He's been using a, a low absorption reactive uh, for, a, for a while in this right lane. In the left lane, he's going to use uh, the new ball that uh, hasn't even been publicly announced yet. And we'll probably announce the name here shortly. Yeah. But... Uh, uh, I don't foresee a whole lot of changes in uh, EJ's game plan this time around. Uh, I do think where sometimes when you're the leader, you can kind of defend, uh, feel like you're defending your territory a little bit. Mm -hmm. After the step ladder the other night, I think EJ feels like he's got something to prove. I think he'll come out guns a blazing, and uh, this may be the one guy that can actually threaten Sterner's run. To victory. Yeah, I mean, Sterner's had some pretty solid scoring out here as we watch Sterner finish off with a couple of strikes here from that semifinal match against Belmo. Uh, how do you keep the mentality of EJ Tackett knowing I've shot 260 and lost? I'm probably might need 260 again to win. Uh, how do you keep that I must strike mentality going? Is that something you can do out here on the tour? Well, I don't think he's all that worried about who he bowls. I mean, uh, these guys are all the best in the world. This is a killer stepladder yeah. that he's had to go through between Simonson, Belmonte, Rash, and now EJ Tackett waiting at the top. It's not like it gets any easier. So I think the the target score probably hasn't changed much. He's still going to look be looking to shoot 250. He's got plenty of bar reaction to shoot that. He's just got to execute. No more urethane, so I don't think there's going to be a lot of big moves. And again, it's just getting the ball to go through the pins, all 12 shots. Yeah, and I guarantee you there's two guys in the building right now that are going to be huge Jason Sterner fans. One of them being Sean Rash, the other one being Kyle Troop. <laughs> well, I don't oh, actually, think, hold on, yeah, actually, hold on. No, no, Troop is not a Sterner fan. Troop is a yeah, EJ Tackett we got, fan. we got split alliances right. here. If we get both those guys to sit side by side, I imagine the cheering would be, uh, would be relatively strong yeah. for for alternate players. Yeah, like you said earlier, the the scenario is if Sterner wins, Troop gets knocked out of the whole the ATX series uh, and the China Cup. If EJ wins, that knocks Rash from first to second and that big bump in the pay scale uh, for the USBC points list. I mean, realistically, it's a $20,000 swing for EJ Tackett in this match. Yes. So yes. 20000 for first, 10 for second, 20000 for first in the USBC points cup list. And 10,000 per second. So and there you got to peek at the trophy and the USBC Cup as we're going to get started here with this championship step ladder match shortly. Jason Sterner, EJ Tackett. EJ finishing up his practice out here. And EJ going back, making sure he's got everything clear. So EJ Tackett taking his last couple of practice shots out here on the mixed patterns. Bear on the left lane, Wolf on the right. And EJ Tackett has top seen this event, will have lane choice. And you see Sean Rash still out there, Sean. As proprietor Kurt Frieders noted earlier today, really the key to getting the summer swing here in Aurora. Sean Rash out hustling, knocking on doors, getting sponsors, and really helping bring this great event to Aurora. We have reverse arrows. Jason, when you're ready to go, you need to give your competition. Red Bull round of applause for our championship match, ladies and gentlemen. So, Sterner is going to be starting things off here in the championship match. And there should be no reason for the game plan to change for Sterner on either lane after Tackett's What's your usual educated guess if you were following Tackett right now? What would you have moved on this left lane if you're flash? Maybe just one. Just 
Just one of the good news is it's not urethane, so it should just be more hook in general, not really. It's not going to be really a tighter down lane situation. So Sterner, flat 10, starting the match. Sterner's first PBA Tour title came back in 2013 in Detroit when he almost threw a perfect game on TV, 299-235 right? yeah. against West Malat at about midnight. At the Faunted Thunder <laughs> Dome. <laughs> also had a couple pretty good finishes, did Sterner. Fourth in the Bowlers Journal Scorpion Championship that year and fifth in the Lucas Open. Lucas Oil Milwaukee Open during the inaugural summer swing back in 2013. Here's the man. Many say the second best in the world currently, and he can't get the flat 10 to go. Yeah, we kind of keep waiting for a little rivalry between him and Jason. They, they both make a ton of shows, but they haven't bowled each other a ton yet. Uh, yeah, and some of that is, although they have two of the highest rev rates on tour, they actually have two very different axis rotations where EJ is more up the back of it, uh, and Jason is much more around it, creating more angle down lane. And so they don't always make a ton of shows together, even though, you know, at times, each of them are... are you know, certainly in the the smallest of circles as the dom the most dominant players. Yeah, the one time that happened this year, very notable, because Jason Belmonte took down the tournament of champions for his 10th major over EJ Tackett in the championship match, 225 to 196. On the left lane, the first two-color ball from Motive in a long time, the Forged Fire making its debut. <laughs> That's a hell of a debut. Yeah. Take 10 down like that. Of course, it is EJ Tackett throwing it. <laughs> He, he does make him look all right, <laughs> typically. Boy, that, and he is actually a little bit deeper than Jason, so uh, maybe a, if you're bowling a lot, you wouldn't want him to be left of you for a long time, but mm -hmm. for a couple of shots, probably not a huge deal. So the adjustment back to the wolf pattern for Sterner. Mm -hmm. Boy, perfect. That eight tried to tease him for just a fraction of a second. The ball said, no, I will slide you left off the pin deck. And we get another look at another quality shot by Jason Sterner. Great shot there. Strike spare, or pardon me, spare strike both players after two frames. And Sterner. He's not kidding. He is a diehard bowler. 52 games to get to this point. The step ladder, three games in already. And in game 56, he's just throwing it as good as he has all event long. Yeah, the number of games this week is going to affect Jason. He is a practice guy. He is a hard worker. And, and certainly, uh, uh, this is just a nice little kickstart <laughs> at 56. He could, bowl. <laughs> he could bowl another 30 this week, I think. So, well, one title. Oops, sorry, Chris. One title for... Tackett this year, the BBA, the Barbasol PBA Tour Finals in Las Vegas. And he matches. Sterner to witness that, and that was his first breakthrough in uh, in a little over a year and a half at that point. And uh, thought we were going to see another one last night. Emotions all over the place where he had that ball in hand, and then uh, made a late mistake and thought he'd lost, and then got another chance. And uh, sure. What a roller coaster, and to come back and then lead this event after that kind of roller coaster is, uh, you know, it tells you a little bit of what somebody's about when they see a little adversity and do they, do they go away or they come back harder than ever. And piece got a, of tape. Got a little tape issue with this ball. Is he putting one in or taking one out? Putting one in. He made a little cut to the piece and then put it in a little bit of a sandpaper in the thumb hole. Likes a little texture apparently. Sometimes you get a little dirt, a little gummed up, and you want to make sure that everything's clean there. Two things happen on a TV show. It's much warmer than it is pretty much any other time. Yep. And the adrenaline's going through your body, so your hand can also shrink, uh, depending on how much you're affected by each. We'll determine whether you take tape in or taking it out. Let's go, EJ. Push. That didn't come off his hand very good. And happy the nine's gone, but still on that bear pad in 3 six, yeah. 10, never easy. That. He'd like to have this one back. This is not 
he was hoping it would push through there, but the lack of urethane uh, at all out of these top five players, where we saw maybe 15 out of the 24 using urethane on the left lane. Ooh, what a big mistake. He's going, how did that happen? He shoots it from so far left yeah. and, so, and basically sure, almost backs it up. Oh, basically oh, does oh, back oh. it up. Well, you, Slides mentioned 40. That, well you mentioned that three pins been back a little bit sometimes he, on the full racks. He hit the inside of it yeah. and still chopped it. It's, I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean. And Scherner doing what he's done in every single match when somebody's provided him an opportunity. He stepped on the gas, throwing another great shot. Watch that ball just roll Ooh. up. Strong through the one three. Almost almost leaving a nine pin up by twenty-seven now. Chance to extend it to thirty-seven. Set on the approach that last little you see those feet kind of shuffling around to keep himself loose. You don't ever want to be completely static before you start. That's not how athletics work. Yes. Gotta go. And how about that? we have seen a couple of breaks go Sterner's way today and that is the third one I can remember, and he's gotten them all on that bear pattern. Yeah, I'm not sure the first two had a ton of uh, impact on the, on the result, but right. that one there is monstrous at this stage. Uh, we saw that six pin during that match with Simonson that just kind of hit Simonson just off and running. EJ yeah. not doing that knows there's a lot of match to go. But he's down 37 already. It's tough this early in the game when you're already in a must-strike situation pretty much every shot. 52 games into this. Great pitch there, just hoping he doesn't ring 10. It's the only thing that he could have left on that pitch. 253 now, the max for Tackett. Put a piece of tape in last time. Looked like it kind of hung on him just slightly. Got to throw a good one here. And that is a good one. A couple of ball, a couple of boards farther to the right with the projection it looked like before yeah. it started to pick up. And he's able to get his ball back from there. At well, this point, you just got to keep striking. You got to hope that the breaks Super. even out a little bit, and hopefully before the end of the game. That's absolutely the furthest point right he can get it to, but he was able to get it from that spot at around the eighth board consistently throughout the round robin. That's one of the big reasons why he's able to lead here today. Well, Sterner says that cutting his hair is his best non-athletic talent. I think if he wins today, he can afford to have someone else cut his hair at the end of the week. That didn't seem like it was a noise issue. No, I, th I think that's just a uh, just a timing thing. He just got a little bit out of whack with his start. Something, something keyed up didn't feel right. That double there does it does flip the, the onus back a little bit. Twenty seven pin lead. Five in a row. The win. <laughs> no problem. He said coming into this step ladder, he felt like he was on a free roll. Anything he got above fifth place is gonna be a bonus, and he's got a chance now, not just for this Illinois Open title. But he jumps into the top eight in the USBC Cup standings, and he could be going to Texas, and he could be going to China. He was 60 back with a game to go to Bill O'Neill, who has been probably the hottest player out here for the last you know, over the last two months or so. Both great everywhere he's been, the playoffs, the the tour finals, everything, and uh, was able to run him down. Shot 259 the last game to, to get into this final, and parlaying that into a big run. Take down the left side of that rack light. Look at the confidence coming back. It's That's a swagger you don't see out of Sterner too often in 2019. It's good to see it back on him right now. It's been something people have been waiting to see from him for a long time. Still got a chance to shoot 290 now. Crossing 18 at the arrows. This is a good projection. The good roll on that one. Able to send the student body left at the seven pin. 
BJ must keep striking. Gets it to peel. Almost the 410. But the 10 goes late. Wow. That's kind of the same shot we saw from Belmo where he got it all the way to it and actually over bounced off it. It just doesn't happen very often to EJ because he gets so far up the back of it that he's able to control that motion off the friction. Well, we know no matter what, Tackett's going to be at the Flow Bowling ATX invite on September 21st at Dark Bowl in Austin, Texas. And we know that EJ Tackett will be participating in the China Tiger Cup. But he could be seeing $20,000 in total going into two other people's pockets right now. Max score, 232. Never say die. That's one thing you can always count on for EJ Tackett. The one thing that EJ is doing that the other guys really haven't done is he is He's throwing a little slower, and he's getting way more rounded on the left lane than he is on the right lane. So he's going back and forth with his axis rotations. Sterner working on six in a row. That's all EJ can do. Yeah. He's already on 240 pace, so EJ's got to hope for an air somewhere to get him back in the match. There's a noise out of the pit, it sounded like. It's an unusual noise. Yeah. And that's People talk about the distractions, oh, they're professionals, you know, nothing should bother them. What bothers players is unusual noises. And the one thing about a bowling center is it's never quiet. So all the normal noises are unusual noises when you get on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Till now it's crashing pins and bowling balls getting tossed yeah. around. And yeah, white noise, there's just yeah. conversations, there's all kinds of things and nothing really, really sticks out. But refocus, reload. Not his best. No, I think the made a pin roll around, but I'm pretty yeah. sure the rack hit that. So they're gonna have to respot the three. Yep, there you see the. Whoa! I don't know. I think it hit it. Okay. They look pretty close. They're they're letting it go. So Stern is already up shooting the spare. Fell awfully fast. Yeah. Covers it up, keeps his large advantage. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Not so sure I agree with that. That looked like a little faster than gravity once it tipped over. I don't know. But with the count being seven pins apart, probably not a huge deal. Yeah. But the now, chop that being said, would, yeah. if he gets into, yeah, it, it would bring a chop into play. It also, uh, he's going to need an open, which will probably include a lower count if it were to happen. Still on 249 pace. Ninth frame. Make it happen. Oh. Doesn't do it. And not the easiest of spares on the bear. With the 2-8 standing. Just a little quick, actually. Wow, that's right a target, too. So. And cross them at 18. That was way closer, about 16 and a half. He is yet Four and a half at the arrows is a pretty big miss for Jason. Yeah, he's yet to shoot at this spare in the step ladder finals today. He's going to take the scenic route. Yeah. Textbook cover. Two basic ways to shoot it. You can move four to five boards right at your feet. You move your target maybe one to two. Or you can just throw it slower and follow your strike line and basically make it so you follow through the front part of the lane the same way and not hit more friction in the front. Yeah, it's all or nothing now for Tackett. He doesn't throw four strikes, Sterner. Yeah, about all he can do is shoot 232. For Sterner, keep one on the lane early on. That's left, and that's done. I got it to the right fast, and it overhooked, and then he moved his eyes in a little bit, and it picked up quick on him. So. Not the way he I'm wanted to finish the summer swing. I'm actually with EJ on that one. I think it's pretty natural natural moves off that and trajectory-wise through the front. It wasn't terrible. I mean, it wasn't something that looked like it was going to go way high, but it did pick up way quicker than the last <laughs> shot did. 
<laughs> and Tackett, 19th on the Wolf, and he missed making cash around that event by a single pin. Used some of that fire on the Bear, where Simonson took him out. And now in the Illinois Open, it's going to be a second place finish. And it's going to be a second place finish in the USBC Cup points for Tackett as well. A really fantastic week. But he will f go home feeling like he's missed a couple of opportunities to, uh, to add to a big total already. King of the Extra Frame Tour, as he calls himself. <laughs> well, there is a uh, jersey on the wall already here for E.J. Tackett. Last time he visited the Parkside Lane was in 2018, where he took down the study in the center. And it's one thing E.J. hasn't been able to do yet in his PBA career. He hasn't won twice in the same center. All these different titles. He's repeated in the PBA Tour Finals, but they were in different centers. And that's something he really wants to do, win twice in a particular bowling center. And another opportunity gone by for E.J. Well, as great of a day as it is for Jason Sterner, Kyle Troop is an unhappy man right now. Yes. Sterner taking Troop's place in the top eight for the USBC Cup. Unofficially, Sean Rash is your winner. EJ Tack at second. Anthony Simonson third. AJ Johnson fourth. Pardon me, Jason Sterner fourth. And AJ Johnson fifth. In that USBC Cup points. So Rash will be receiving the cup this afternoon along with the $20,000 check. Sterner going to be receiving. The $20,000 winner check and the trophy here for the full bowling PBA Illinois opening. So there you see the two men that are going to be receiving $20,000 checks this afternoon. Jason Sterner for this full bowling PBA Illinois Open. The handshake from the great Carmen Salvino as well. You know that means a lot to Jason Sterner at this point in time. And Sean Rash will end up receiving the USBC Cup and the $20,000 check that goes with that award. Uh, players accumulated points for each of the events that go to the summer tour. The last event of the USPC Cup was the Illinois Open. It's my pleasure to introduce PBA Tour Champion Rhino Page. Rhino. Rhino is here representing the United States Boarding Congress. Who will be awaiting the cup to Sean Rash. Come on down, Sean. On behalf of the United States Foreign Congress Board of Directors, it is my pleasure to present to you the 2019 USBC. Congratulations. Yeah. Long road for Sean Rask, the third season. The big smile, the big cup. Join the USBC, take take part in nationals, great organization for a great sport. Thank you. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce to the 
and you now you've parlayed that into a hoe in over Bill O'Neill. Let's see, the whole list here we go. O'Neill, Simonson, Belmonte, Rash, and now EJ Tackett. Is that pretty much how you saw it playing out? I was pretty terrified after that first gutter spare, right? Out my way and you know just kept pushing and that's how, how it goes the momentum was towards me and just kept riding the wave well tommy proved that actually that's a key to victory <laughs> actually sorry, sorry sean <laughs> <laughs> you know there's been a couple of tough years you, you had you had a great run there around 13 14 and had some great tournaments it's been a little slower than you, you'd like what have you done to get yourself back here today uh, about four months ago, I made a group change because I couldn't even get through eight games without my thumb splitting open. So, uh, bad season, and you know, really it was just lost my confidence. And then you know, I committed to the changes. Dougie can't help me out. Uh, I went and spent a couple of days with him and uh, really just changed my life around, man. And you know, started committing to it, started working out more. And, uh, and here we are. And, and the proof's in the pudding. That's it. There you go. Our 2019 Illinois champion, Jason Sterner. Great yeah. Host here, Kurt Breeders, and the staff here at Parkside Lane. It's been a, a tremendous event. Hands, uh, big round of applause for them as well. <laughs> and the question pains me, Sean Rash has done a lot to uh, to help out the players. Uh, to do it, you put this event together, including a, a giant youth clinic on uh, on the opening Saturday, where over 180 kids were out here. Sean, you anything to say? Uh, first of all, I just want to thank our sponsors, uh, Flow Bowling, Evernight International, Dave Walker, thank you and your team. Uh, special thanks to USBC for giving me some extra money now. Uh, <laughs> big thanks to the Freeders and Parkside Lanes. They let me practice here. They, uh, they stepped up with the PBA needed to the host. Our fans have been unbelievable this week. You know, talking about USBC and being a member, this whole week that we had, was our league meeting week. Uh, if I wasn't going to Sweden, I'd be bowling late Tuesday. So, uh, go ball league, you know, practice, learn from whoever you can, but our fans are, are by far the best. Without flow this week, you know, giving out to all across the building, uh, you know, you being in the booth, uh, Phil, Lucas, it's been a blast this week. So, it's been a hell of a week. Uh, I'm looking forward to an unbelievable meal and someone driving me home. <laughs> I'll be in Europe in a couple days. Chris and everybody, thank you all so much for being here tonight. Yeah. Once again, congratulations to Jason Stern for winning the year. You can watch him and the seven other qualifiers at the Flow Bowling ATX Cup September 21st, right here on Flow Bowling. Thank you, sir. And you will see all that coming up our next telecast here on Flow Bowling. There's your step player, Jason Sterner, taking care of four matches, bottom to top, and he's walking out of here twenty thousand dollars richer as the winner of the Illinois Open. Great bowling over the last six days here on Flow Bowling. This was a great championship match to wrap that up. And as we get into the game-winning shots in that championship match for Jason Sterner, we remind you to join us for the next live Flow Bowling event, the Flow Bowling ATX Invite, coming to you from Dart Bowl in Austin, Texas on September 21st. Your participants there will be Sean Rash, EJ Tackett, Anthony Simonson, Jason Sterner, A.J. Johnson, Bill O'Neill, Kyle Sherman, and Tommy Jones. It's going to have the feel of a major, no doubt about it. One day event, $25,000 going to the winner. And these same eight players will be going to China in late November to participate in the first ever PBA event on China soil. Just outside of Shanghai, the China Tiger Cup. We'll see you September 21st. Thanks for joining us all week long here from the Flow Bowling PBA Summer Swing. We want you to watch it and enjoy it. Thanks again, folks. Good night.